So this is the universe. It's a big place. It's old. It's about 14 billion years old. And each one of these spots of light are our neighbors. Each one of these spots of light is a galaxy. And the closest neighbor is about two and a half million light years away. Now I want to introduce you to Professor Dumpster's universe. And this specific point in time is about 421 in the morning on a Monday. It's actually around 421 in the morning every Monday. What I wouldn't give to move those neighbors 2.5 million light years away. So the question comes up, Professor Dumpster, why do you live in a dumpster? I get this question quite often from my girlfriend, <laughs> my mother, my students, children, small animals. People are always asking, why do you live in a dumpster, Professor Dumpster? Well, there's a couple reasons. One of them is, I'm an environmental science professor. That's what I do for a living. I write papers on this, I give lectures, I go give talks. But more specifically, I'm into environmental health. So I study that interaction between human health and the environment. And I've been doing this for a while. I went to a school for a very long time to do this. And I've been looking for a way to engage a much broader cross-section of the public. Beyond those two or three of my students that I make read my papers, beyond the 15 or 20 students that have to stay awake in my lectures. So I gave this a lot of statistical, very logical thought. And thought, okay, how can I engage a broader cross-section in this whole idea of environmental health. And I came up with what I thought was the most logical solution, which was move in a dumpster and live there a year. So this is a dumpster. A dumpster is a object that's largely invisible. We don't see dumpsters. I counted five in the parking lot on the way in today. I would suspect that not many of you are either living in a dumpster or counting dumpsters for a living at this point. We're taking an ordinary object, an invisible one, and we're adding something to it. A very normal looking chap there on a university campus. And we're reimagining this invisible object as a home. So the broader thing that we're trying to do here through this reimagining process really are a few things. We're trying, number one, to build the tiniest, most sustainable, most carefully designed home in the world. But we're also trying to engage a much broader cross-section of the public in issues around less is more and sustainability. And the ultimate hypothesis that we're after is that one can have a pretty good life living in and on a lot less. So what do you do? when you want to make a dumpster a home. The first thing is you do a little bit of home shopping. You go check out some dumpsters. This is actually the first dumpster I ever stepped into. <laughs> this is going to be a dad joke, but hashtag fail. After you've chosen a home, there on the left, you get your students into your house. You do the obligatory dumpster selfie. My place was sort of trashed out, so we gave it a bit of a bath. Always want to do that with a fixer upper. A 
First night, cardboard on the floor, not a real luxurious type of accommodation. I invited my girlfriend over, she politely declined that evening. You've got to do a little bit of work on your house. Invited some friends. Always paint your house or a room white if you want it to seem big on the inside. Added a roof. As with all dumpster homes, you need to weld the weather station onto the side of it. It looks fine, but I forgot to And then we know it's hot in Texas. In a dumpster, it gets up to 132.05 degrees in the middle of August. So you add a window unit air conditioner. What you end up with is something like this. Nice little garden by the homestead. Drop top convertible. Weather station. And then you go to work on the inside. If you're really gonna make a beautiful, comfortable dumpster home, you wanna do something like this. I hear the oohs and ahs. If you do build a dumpster home, I suggest you always have at least one succulent and one dream catcher. So what are we doing here? When we reimagine a dumpster, something that's invisible, we throw a person into it, we convert it into a home, we're actually bringing some things into very sharp focus. And the first one that I want to talk about is water. Dumpsters don't fit toilets. Where does our water come from? How much water do we use? What do we use that water for? How much does that water cost? Ultimately, where does that water end up? And when you're living in a dumpster, it doesn't have a tap. So you've got to get your water from somewhere else. And for the first six months that I was living in the dumpster, I walked lady. down the hill, sometimes bringing a student, 1.1 miles, and carried five gallon buckets up the hill and then filtered them. This is not something that you want to do in the middle of August in Texas. So we started thinking, how can we do this a little bit more efficiently? And actually, one of our sponsors, one of the contributors to the project, actually my aunt, came to us and said, have you ever heard of a hippo water roller? But no. This is what one looks like. It's actually a very simple tool. It's about a 25-gallon barrel. Fill it up with water down at the lake. Close the lid. It's kind of like pushing a real fat baby up the hill. It's also five times faster for Professor Dumpster in terms of moving water. So we take it up there and filter it. We filtered it for about six months, and here's me just showing uh, a kid who I, I'm not going to say exactly what uh, he is going through his head right there, but how the whole process works. And uh, we began to look a little more carefully at this water filter and what was happening. When we did some more sophisticated tests, we found that there were trace elements of things that you would not want to sprinkle onto your morning cereal. Things like lead, things like zinc, and trace amounts. Needless to say, Professor Dumpster, although it may have caused some additional brain damage, it was at trace amounts, probably not, uh, stop drinking this water. But because we were reimagining, because we were in a dumpster, because it, we had been going through this process of looking at water more carefully, through this failure, we actually learned a few things. So let's move from water to something a little bit more intangible, not as quantifiable as water. And let's talk about stuff. I lived in a 3,000 square foot house. The average new American home is about 2,500 square feet. I had a lot of stuff in that house. You begin to look like a bit of a hoarder when you take all that stuff and move it into 36 square feet, about 1%. So I had to do something, and I did something a little bit radical. I went onto Facebook, which I know is radical for you guys at this point. Instagram wouldn't handle this. And I posted that I would be selling everything in my home for a dollar an item at six o'clock, and students, public, here's my address, why don't you come on by? By seven o'clock, I can tell you the entire house was cleared out, except for one backpack. Flash forward, 
a little bit later to living in the dumpster. I had a big walk-in closet, about 2.5 dumpsters in size. That's how we measure things these days. Now this is what my closet looks like. Five bow ties, three pairs of pants. Professor Dumpster doesn't shower that often, so he mixed in quite a bit of underwear and socks. So through this whole process of taking a dumpster, putting someone in it, calling it a home, taking something invisible and making it visible, bringing sharp things into focus, I would say what happened was that hypothesis was proven to be true. I am a lot happier. I'm not just happier because I'm living in a slightly smaller space. You've probably heard people around town talking about how congested traffic is, commutes, property taxes, rent. All those things weren't a real big problem in the dumpster. But I'm also happier just that it's freed up quite a bit of space in the mind in terms of having all this stuff. And it's also made the whole environmental health thing much broader and much more interesting to a wider cross-section of the public. Now, when you are having this much fun and reimagining happiness, you certainly want to invite others to join in on the party. So we've recently launched, actually after my year in the dumpster, one night after that, we had a local principal stay in the dumpster as part of the new Dumpster Homeschool Residency Program can see the teachers in the back raising their hands. No. This program is going to allow teachers to come in, experience the dumpster for a night, and then go back to your classrooms with various types of sustainability curriculum. So in closing, there's a question that I want each of you to ask yourselves. I want you to ask, what you'll reimagine. What is your invisible object in life that you can reimagine as something that can be really cool? And an even deeper, a very old question, this probably actually goes back to the Greeks, 5th century BC. It's a very deep, very, it may even go back to the very beginning of humanity. And that question is, What's your dumpster? Thank you very much.